Exercise 25. In this exercise, we're going to look at the weldments and structural steel capabilities with inside SOLIDWORKS. Uh, if you look at your Adobe PDF file, you'll see that um, there are several different tools for this. Uh, there's actually a whole toolbar of just weldments. So you might want to bring that up first just by right clicking at the top of your screen on any of the icons and finding the weldments toolbar and bring that up because that's what we're going to be using. Uh, we're going to build this structure that you see here and we'll take a look at some of the neat tools that SOLIDWORKS has to offer for creating something like that. So to begin with, first thing we're going to do is we're going to start a sketch on the top plane and draw a rectangle centered that's 36 by 29.5. So we start off with a new part file Make sure it's set up for ANSI inch specification. Select the top plane and start your sketch. There's a tool in here under the rectangle. You'll find center rectangle. Use that. Drag out the rectangle and put in the dimensions. In this case, again, 36 by 29.5. Once complete, we'll move on to the next step. Let's bring up our toolbar for the weldments. Right click on any icon, and at the bottom you'll find weldments. And I'll drag that out so we can see it a little bit better here. And get out of the dimensioning mode. Okay, on the Weldments toolbar, what we're looking for is a 3D sketch tool, uh, actually the, weld, the Weldment tool, and you'll see it's grayed out currently. The reason for that is that you have to actually rebuild to exit the sketch, and then you should find it available. Click on the Weldment icon. The next thing you'll see, use this, this icon, the Structural Member icon, and select ANSI inch, square tube, 3 by 3 by 0.25, and then we'll just proceed by selecting entities. So we select over here, structural member, three by three by five square tube. You'll see that there's a, a library of different types of tubing and angle irons. And now we'll just select and it automatically generates our geometry. Okay. And then the next thing we'll select over here and then click on these entities. Now you could have a corner treatment adjustment by simply clicking on each corner or on the left hand side you could do it across the, the whole part. In this case um, we could switch between mitered or this one or that one. We'll go with that one for right now. Actually we'll go with the one in the middle which is uh, not coming up right now but it's okay. Then you just click on the little dot here again to do the same thing and select the corner treatment that you prefer. And that looks good. And then we could hit apply, the green check mark. Now everything is editable, so if you want, you could right click on here and go back to Edit Feature and change any of those. Okay, the next thing we want to do is offsetting a plane. What we're doing here is actually we're building a three-dimensional sketch for the foot or the feet of or legs of this uh, entity right now, and we're going to create it on a plane that's parallel to the one that runs right through the center. And so we learned another new way of creating a plane by offsetting a uh, plane parallel to a point. The way this works is first of all we select the front plane and then go to the reference geometry and find the plane icon. Now you could go ahead and select this point right here. 
the gray point for the sketch. And it automatically goes parallel plane at a point. So basically we're just offsetting it to that point. So that's just one more way you could create a plane. And now we could start sketching on that plane. So right away we could click on sketch and we'll take, we'll zoom up there and we'll draw a vertical leg and then we want to make a member in between there so don't lock it in at the midpoint but somewhere up here click and attach that to the gray line now if you're doing this in the front view uh, that might be a little difficult it might actually not want to snap to all these things a couple extra lines here that I didn't need. All right, now we have to add the dimensions. So we'll go to dimension the length of this leg and according to the book it should be 20 inches high and then the, this uh, member should be a 45 degree angle and 8 inches from the base. So 20, 8, and 45. And as we could see, it did not extend properly. It never grabbed that relationship. So that's okay. I could just click on that endpoint, hold control, and select the gray line. And we'll add a coincident relationship. And there it is. Okay. Now we could go ahead and select the structural members icon again. Um, in order to do that, we should hit Rebuild to exit the sketch. Go over here to Structural Member. Select the entities. You'll notice it automatically trims it, in this case, up to the next post. However, it does not trim it onto the already existing geometry. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll apply this. And then we'll use the Trim tool that's given on here. Right here, Trim Extend. Now all we do is select it, and for the bodies to be trimmed, we select the two entities, and then the trimming boundary. We could actually select planar face, and then select this underside face here. Make sure you click in this pink box here first before you do that. If you accidentally select like I did, just select it again to deselect. And I'll select this face at the, the base, and it will automatically trim those structural members up to that and hit apply. Okay, the next step is we want to put the little foot pad down at the bottom. Now this is a four by six and a half inch offset on either edge of the leg. So what we do is we just select this bottom face, start our sketch. Notice we are in an assembly, we're in a part file actually, we're not in an assembly. SOLIDWORKS does something rather interesting with this functionality in that it actually kind of works as though it's an assembly, but yet we have the simplicity of working in a part file. So this is going to be 4 by 8, and then a half inch off the back of that leg, and then another half inch from this edge. And now we just extrude that. And there is an extrude tool on the Weldments toolbar. So if you want to just forego going to the features, this is the exact same tool. It's just for your convenience put here. And just make sure that it's um, 75, uh, 0.75 deep. Okay. Now, what we want to do is put a weld bead around there. And in the weldment tools, there is just such a tool, the fillet bead, select it. And as for the parameters, make sure you follow here, 0.125 for the fillet size. And then we just have to select the faces. So face set one can be this, face set two can be this. And it will travel all the way around and add our fillet.
actually simulates with a texture what it, uh, a real weld be. And actually I made that a little too big. It's supposed to be six. So I'll just double click on it and update it. All right. One other thing we need to add in here, and I'm going to hide my plane. I'm just going to right click on this plane and there's a little set of eyeglasses for hide. So we don't need to see that. Next thing we're going to put in are the gussets in the corner here. And you can see it's going to be five by five, one inch thick, centered. So we could go ahead and select the gusset tool right here. Select this face and this face here. And we can see a preview of a gusset. Make sure you bump it up to five by five. And you could have it centered or offset, but it should be one inch thick. And then here's the location. Actually, I don't think it's supposed to be one inch thick. Let me just go back. Oh, it is. Okay. And we could select the location centered, completely centered, depending upon what you select here. Or you could even specify an offset. I'll actually just center it like that. There's also other options here. You have polygonal profile. And you can see that there's little chamfers there. And you could adjust that. And hit apply. Yours doesn't have to be exactly like mine. Okay, now what we need to do is mirror everything over. So for that, we could just use the mirror tool. So we go to features, mirror, and because we centered everything, we have two nice planes, the, the front and the right plane to mirror this about. So for the mirror front or plane, we just click over here. We'll, we'll do the uh, front plane first, and then the features to mirror, just select everything. You can select them from the feature tree, that might be easier. And then just hit apply. And I might have missed something here. Okay, basically, um, I was wrong, it should not be set to features to mirror, it needs to be set to bodies to mirror. So if you're in features to mirror, right click in that box and clear the selection just to make sure there's nothing in there. Then go to bodies to mirror and make your selection of all those same entities. Make sure you even select the weld bead and then hit apply. And we could do it again. Go back to the mirror tool. This time the mirror plane or face will be the right plane. And the bodies to mirror should be everything that we had selected earlier, including the weld bead. And apply. Okay, almost finished. Now we just need to put end caps on these openings here. And there is just such a tool that automates this to a degree. Uh, we could click on end cap on the weldments specify the thickness and then just select where you want to drop it now if you want you could chamfer the corners so they're not sharp and you could put any parameters that you wish in there uh, the fact of the matter is you have to add them one by one and they don't always mirror depending upon where they're located so just be aware I'm just going to do mine individually. Probably could have mirrored these the way this one was designed. Okay, now I'm going to right click on these sketches that I see and I'm going to hide those because we no longer need to see this, the uh, profile sketches. You can see there's actually a little weld bead note on there that will drop into a drawing automatically for us. And there's a cut list here right click and isolate or click on exit isolate and now we could see all these different members um, there is an option in here to actually um, let's update this and it creates cut list items whenever it detects the similar entities 
and size and parameters, it will put them in the same folder. And that's nice for making a bill of materials later on. Okay, let's uh, save this and we'll proceed to make a drawing of it. So now we could go to File, Make Drawing from Part. We'll just take any template that's available. And we'll drop in a couple views. And we'll hit apply here. Um, I have mine set to the wrong angle, so I'm going to right click on the bottom here. And oh, it is actually set to third angle. Actually, let me delete that. And I'll unfold under view layout, a projected view. And we could bring in an isometric view. And if we want, we could go to the rotate tool and rotate that around. And let's bring in cut list. Select any one of the views, go to annotations, tables, and you'll find a weldment cut list. Select that, hit apply, and we could drop it up in the corner. And here you can see they're categorized by uh, each individual component. And it has the lengths that are required of each tube. And we could even go in and we could add balloons. Let me undo that. I meant to put it in this view here. And there we go. And that finishes exercise 25.